Good morning, good morning, good morning, fellow traders, and welcome to today's live trading session. As you guys know, today is September 11th, 911, 22 years from when the world changed. <laughs> but um, of course, um, we're going to still look at the markets. We're going to still um, try to figure out what the market wants to do for today. I know we have a few ideas that's on our radar. But um, we're going to look for momentum plays in the beginning and then uh, maybe do some top down analysis um, later on. But, um, yeah, I hope you guys had a wonderful week uh, or weekend, um, a rested weekend. And um, right now we can jump in and dive into these charts and figure out what price wants to do for maybe the remainder of the week. But if not the remainder of the week, at least for today. Uh, we can get an idea of what price may want to do for today. So moving forward, I guess we can talk about this first pair that I have on my radar. It's on the one hour chart. Uh, we're on a one hour chart of US dollar Japanese yen or USD JPY or UJ. But um, we're currently on a one hour chart. And as you guys can see, um, based on what price is doing now, what type of environment are we in right now? Are we in a bullish environment? or a bearish environment right now? Let me ask you guys that question, just to see if you guys um, are you know, pretty much familiar with environments. Because you oftentimes want to trade in the direction of the environment. Um, where is the environment now on this trading time frame? So of course, um, yeah, Adam said dollar weakness bearish. And that's true. If you look at the dollar, the dollar did sell off. But, um, you know, just because the dollar sold off doesn't mean it's bear. In this case, it is. Um, in the U.S. dollar, Japanese yen, it is a bearish environment, uh, primarily due to dollar weakness. But what you want to do, you want to primarily look at the asset that you're trading because one asset could be weaker than the other. I mean, even though we know that, that this is not the case here. But the Japanese yen could be weaker than the U.S. dollar. So then you typically want to look to see, OK, you know, we know what the dollar is doing. What is this pair doing overall? And what you see with the pair, you see this pair sliding lower, uh, which means that, you know, of course, we're in a bearish environment. And the reason why is because price broke and closed below this wick right here. Closed below it. And we have the 20 SMA sloping sharply to the downside. So then. If there's ever a thing you want to do with this particular setup, it's to sell. You want to look for sell opportunities on the U.S. dollar, Japanese yen. So, you know, we'll be looking to sell. You can see that price ran up to an area of supply. Let me just draw this in. Like right around here, it tested this zone of supply. Uh, we can call this one hour, uh, one hour supply where the sellers are. Price came, tagged this area, and now we see in this. Um, slide lower. So then we could be in the middle of this movement lower right now. Um, we could be in the middle of it. But, um, you know, like we always mentioned before, what we typically want to see when we go down to a trigger time frame, we want to see if there's something like a three wave correction, you know, on that trigger time frame. So, um, yeah, good morning, Brianna. Thanks for coming. Um, yeah. So then, um, yeah, we want to see price um, give us that type of price behavior. And for those who are new, of course, this will be kind of difficult in the beginning. But the more you see us go over this stuff, the more easier it will get. But right now, uh, we do need to look for selling opportunities on the U.S. dollar, Japanese yen, momentums to the downside. We need to wait for confirmation. So then what we're going to do. Um, we can either wait for this candle to close, which will take a while, which will be in about 50 minutes. But um, that's that's one way we can enter the trade. Look, look for this um, candle close right here, this recent candle close. But um, another thing we can do is drop down to a smaller time frame. So um, what we're going to do is go down to the 15 minute and you'll see that things look kind of different, different. So. For those who's been with us for a while, let me ask you guys this question. Remember what I said earlier on the 15 minute time frame, which is the next lower time frame, you know, from the one hour. We typically want to see a three wave correction. We typically want to see something like this. Let me just draw this in. 
So um, we typically want to see like a leg A, a leg B, and a leg C, and then price falling lower. Now, let me ask you guys this question. Do we see that here? Do we see a three wave correction? Yes or no? Yep. Okay. Robert said no. And Stuart said no. Yep. And the both of you are correct. We do not see that yet. What we want to see is something like this. This is A, B. So then what we're expecting is price to give us maybe another retest of these highs. And then we'll see maybe the true sellers come in. So then that's what we want to wait for. However, this momentum right now is kind of strong. But in order to really be more consistent, you have to be consistent in how you execute your trades. If there's something that you want to see most of the, t of the time, you have to wait for that to happen. So, you know, if you want to, you can jump and enter a sale if you want. However, what we're going to do is wait. We're going to definitely wait for the environment to change on the 15. And we want to also wait for that three wave pullback. So then this is what I think is going to happen. Uh, price is going to find some support right here in this area. This area will act as an area of demand. And we can probably put this as 15 minute demand. Um, and then um, from there, we'll see price, you know, bounce somewhere within the zone. Come up here to retest this area. And then from there, we'll see price fall. And then that can give you an idea of how you want to play um, the U.S. dollar Japanese yen. But for the most part, we're looking for sales. That's what we're looking to do. We're looking for sell opportunities only on a US dollar Japanese yen. And just like um, someone mentioned earlier, um, it's mainly due to dollar weakness. The dollar is selling off, which means we're expecting stocks to also rally. So uh, we'll see. The market opens in about another hour and 20 minutes from now. So, um, yeah, we'll see. But yeah, yeah, we're definitely looking for sales on the used dollar Japanese yen. So then we're going to be a little bit patient on this one. We're not going to jump the gun yet. And we're just going to wait for price to do exactly what we would want it to do before we actually execute the sale. Because we want to sell the U.S. dollar against the Japanese yen. In other words, we want to buy U.S. Do dollar Japanese yen. We want to convert our U.S. dollars into Japanese yen. I know that may sound confusing, but for the most part, we see the chart going down. We see price heading down. We want to sell. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Marvin, did you want to add? Yeah, I just kind of want to briefly touch in on some of the, um, you know, fundamental aspects of the U.S. dollar Japanese yen and what happened during Sunday's open. Um, for, for some of you, and depending depending on what part of the world you're in, um, that would be Monday morning if you're in Asia. But for us, it was Sunday evenings uh, for those of us who live in the Western Hemisphere in the U.S. Um, last night we saw that uh, when the markets opened, we saw this extraordinary sell-off in the dollar. And you can see, um, Mel, if you move the chart up, you can see that like right at the open. Um, if you guys see that strong sell-off, that strong bearish candlestick. Uh, almost like a bearish engulfing candlestick showed that there was strong order flow and strong selling pressure to the downside. And really, that was a result of just some weekend news that came out. We had um, Chinese inflation data that came out that was pretty, um, pretty solid. Of course, it relieved some of the fears of a slowing Chinese economy, because just like what we talked about uh, some weeks ago, we've been seeing the Chinese economy sort of deteriorate. And they're actually, um, you know, experiencing some pressure, experiencing some sluggishness at the moment. But over the weekend on Saturday, we saw the inflation data that, that came out and it was actually good for the Chinese economy. But um, that wasn't the only good news that came out over the weekend. We also heard news that the Bank of Japan is considering uh, removing their negative interest rate policy. Um, you, for those of you guys that have been trading with us for some time, you know the Japanese yen has maintained the negative yield on their currency. And, and that's the reason why there's been a strong divergence or a strong, um, you could say, um, polarization between the Japanese yen and, and other currencies. Um, the Japanese yen would usually remain weaker than other currencies since it has a negative interest rate attached to you know, its currency. 
So then when and when um, Ueda, who's the actual the Bank of Japan uh, president, when he made those statements that they're considering moving the Japanese yen out of negative territory, then that's definitely going to boost the value of the Japanese yen. And we saw this massive sell off, um, you know, overnight and, you know, in the U.S. dollar, um, in the U.S. dollar versus Japanese yen. And, and we saw that pass over into U.S. dollar selling across most of uh, the currency pairs, but it also helped to uplift stocks and uplift futures markets as well, because we see futures um, trading in positive territory mm -hmm. ahead of the Wall Street open. So yeah, there's some risk appetite. Yeah, so today is some risk appetite. You know, I'll touch on a little bit more when we do get to the fundamental analysis part, but I just kind of wanted to touch on why we're seeing this strong sell off in US dollar Japanese yen. But also, since it has been selling off for most of the session thus far, we could see the market want to repair or retrace some some of that since it's been in a strong sell off mode in a sense. So, yeah, it's yeah, we'll see what happens. But yeah. um, right now it's testing that area of demand, that 15 minute demand zone that that my brother just um, plotted out. And there's a possibility we may see some buyers come in. But if we don't, if we see continued selling, then that just lets us know that the bears are in control yeah. and they want to send this um, lower. Yeah. So then let's just say that price continues selling off. And it doesn't respect this zone. It doesn't respect this zone, and 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 bounce higher. It doesn't. It doesn't do that. It decides to do something like this and then break to the downside. Let's just say that 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 um, happens. Well, um, if that does happen, how do you get involved in this trade? How do you execute? Well, um, just to let you know, uh, what we could see right here also is an area of demand you know right here um and of course you know we'll touch on it later but what we see is a violation of what we call internal structure to the upside which makes this area an area where buyers can come in right here and the more you see us go over this stuff um the more you'll get familiar with it it'll be second nature you identify some of the same stuff that we see and then you'll be able to predict what the market will do so Let's just say that price does push down. Well, what we want to see in this case, we'll wait for price to clear this zone. And if it breaks and closes below this low right here, then we'll just wait for price to tag this low, this area, and then we'll immediately jump in for a sale and then ride that momentum down. You know, the reason why is because you have um, a lot of, you know, you don't have that much resistance or structure. Of course, you do have imbalance. In this zone or in this area, uh, specifically, um, well, yeah. But let me—I I don't want to confuse you guys anymore. But just know that we could continue to see a sell-off, maybe down to this zone where we have this box drawn out um, down here. So then, yeah, we'll we'll wait to see what happens. But I wanted to paint that picture and show you that, just to let you know that. Oftentimes we have multiple plans. We have a plan A and we have a plan B. And that's based on what price does. So if price does this, then we'll wait for that. But if price does this, then we'll do that. So, you know, that's what that's how we typically trade. That's how you become successful trading the markets. So if price bounces from this zone initially and comes back up here to retest its highs, then we'll look for another opportunity to short. But if price continues sliding lower and it breaks through these lows, then we'll look for an opportunity to sell or short on the retest. But um, I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. But, you know, we're going to go over this stuff over and over again. I know some of you guys have been with us for a while. It's become like second nature. You know exactly what we see, um, you know, when we look at the charts. But if there are any questions about this, um, let me know. Um, you can ask any question that you want. There's no terrible question or simple question any question that you want in regards to this setup um you can ask um if not then we'll move forward to the next um next pair or next asset but yeah yeah we're definitely um seeing some risk appetite today and um i think even if we go to the next setup you'll see more clearly why all right so then i guess we don't have any questions so then what we can do from here we can go to our next pair which is the aussie usd but um 
yeah, right here we see this. Well, we saw a wick form <laughs> right here uh, on this one hour. Um, it's forming now, so we could see that bounce up like what we expected. We'll come back to this setup um, later on because we definitely don't want to miss it. But um, all right, let's go to AUD USD or the Aussie USD, and we're currently looking at the one hour chart again. And um, as you can see, we're in the middle of this push higher. Let me clear out some of these lines because um, some of these lines aren't needed right now. But um, you can see that price is um, actually you know pushing higher, right? It is pushing. Um, it may want to break to the upside. Um, but yeah, it didn't give us a strong retracement that we would have wanted to see. But um, this could be all that we needed to see. And you know the reason why is if you go to the 15 minute chart let's let's see what the 15 minute chart tells us all right so yeah this is the 15 minute chart right here so then on the 15 minute chart um i know this could be quite confusing for some of you but um to me i don't really see the three way pullback yet However, there's times when I'm wrong, um, you know, typically because some people may see this. They may see a leg A, leg B and a leg C. Oh, we see the three way pullback. Let's buy. And we did get a strong bounce. So I could be wrong. But um, what I want to see is something that's more clear and defined and definite, like something like this, like this could be a leg A. Maybe this is a leg B and we could be in the middle forming leg C now. Who knows? But um, I'm just going to wait and be patient. I know we have a double top right here. Um, you guys can see it left top. Price comes down, forms this right top. Um, this is also called an M pattern, like the letter M. And then we see price pushing down. So then oftentimes when that is the case, then you'll see this area act as an area of resistance or supply. And price will usually, you know, react to it and, and you know, and maybe give us a, you know, a slide lower before it heads higher. So, you know, that's what I'm expecting for the Aussie um, USD. But going back to the one hour chart. Um, yeah, we're definitely in this area where we could see sellers come in at. We have, you know, resistance, right? Well, you know, these long wicks right here, um, which is, you know, acts as an area of resistance or supply. Also, um, let me do this. Um, because I know some people would see this, but um, right here we have what is called an area of imbalance or inefficiency. And, you know, of course, the more you see this, like we're going to go over these concepts over and over and over again, and you'll be able to see it. But, you know, whenever you have a strong volume candle right here, like a strong volume candle, that lets you know that there's imbalance. So um, we could be seeing a bunch of sell orders in this area there's an overwhelming number of sell orders in comparison to buy orders so you know we want to be careful here but what we're going to do is simply just sit on our hands a little bit and uh what i would do based on how things are looking um i'm just going to say hey before we do anything of course we have this zone of an internal structure right here um let me just draw this in and say one hour supply internal supply right here and then we have these wicks right here so if price closes above this zone and really even above these highs um in order to be safe in other words if you get another push higher and if this candle over the next what um, um 40 minutes or so or almost like i think 36 minutes if it closes above this zone and even if it closes above this high, like I would like to see it close above this high, sort of similar to what we saw or what we talked about with the US dollar Japanese yen. Then that is when I'll look for price to come down, retest this area and then pop higher. So then I'll be a little bit patient on this one as well. But with the way things are looking, it looks like the dollar just wants to continue selling off. So, um, yeah, we'll just wait for the close of the hour and see what happens but in all these setups we want to sell the dollar um, we want to trade against the u.s dollar because the u.s dollar right now is selling off and um, that could be a good thing you know sometimes a weak dollar isn't a bad thing it could be a good thing because 
you know, it just means that, you know, the economy, um, there's risk appetite, you know, um, people want to buy stocks and um, all that good stuff. Plus, it's good for trade and it's good for employment. Um, the weaker the dollar is, the more products and goods we can ship overseas. So, um, you know, that's the reason why a weak dollar can sometimes be a good thing, but it's a, it's a nice balance um, that you really need. But yeah, we're looking to buy Aussie USD. So we'll just wait and see how this one hour mm -hmm. candle closes before we decide to execute or do anything. Yeah. You know, I want to touch on, you know, the Aussie, you know, in particular, because, um, we know that the Australian dollar is one of the strongest or stronger currencies for today. And most of you know, it's a commodity linked currency. It's considered a high beta currency that's very sensitive to changes in, in the risk environment. So then we see that there's this uh, strong breakout to the upside in, in, in the Aussie versus USD. And just like Melvin mentioned, some of this rally could is, you know, is due to the US dollar weakness. But um, it's also due to what we see happening in iron ore futures and also copper futures. So then let me just do this real quick and just pull up, you know, I'll just pull up another chart. Like uh, we have this here where we have um, the chart of the Aussie USD, the one hour chart. And I want to pull up another side chart um, here. And uh, what I want to I want to go to the one hour time frame and then um, we're going to go to um, iron ore. So let's do the iron ore futures. Right here, uh, we want to do this right here, iron ore futures. And as you can see here, um, let me just do this real quick um, because I know Matt wants to move forward. We can see that iron ore futures have been rallying from the lows here and it has continued to rally. And there's some news coming out of China like um, like, I, you know, I haven't read it, but I know, it's you know, the metals are rallying today primarily on that news. So then we have a combination of U.S. dollar weakness, but also iron ore futures rallying. We have copper futures rallying. I think, you know, even since hearing the news over the weekend from the Chinese CPI data or inflation data, that's helping to serve sort of like as a tailwind for metals, because if, if there are signs of the Chinese economy maybe on the brink of picking up, even though it's not where it needs to be, but if there are signs of hope that the Chinese economy could be on the verge of recovering, then that's definitely gonna serve as a tailwind for metals. Since we know that China, you know, they're big on manufacturing, they're big on construction projects and, and property development. So then they're gonna need these, these metals, these base metals, these industrial metals in order to facilitate and complete some of their projects. So then we're seeing this move up in iron ore and iron ore has a high positive correlation coefficient to the Australian dollar. So if you're ever looking for reasons why the Australian dollar is moving the way it, it does move, then look at iron ore futures, FEF, uh, you know, one, this is the 30 day contract, you know, futures for iron ore. And you can kind of get an idea or, you know, what's happening um, or why the Australian dollar is moving the way it's moving because it has a tight correlation with iron ore. And also we know the Australian dollar has a tight correlation with the Chinese yuan, with the Chinese economy, since they're strong trading partners. So since that good news came out over the weekend from China, that's going to be, you know, positive for the Australian dollar since the Australian dollar trades as a proxy for the Chinese yuan. So you can see how both are sort of um, agreeing with this upward bias in Aussie. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah. So we definitely see that correlation. They're both really moving strongly to the upside. So that should give you more confident confidence in you buying Aussie USD or even buying iron ore or the, these hard commodities um, because uh, the, uh, the Australian economy is solely based on hard commodities like copper, iron, gold. It's a mining economy, you know, so then um, they make a lot of their money from the hard metals and hard commodities. But when commodity prices go up, from hard commodities like metals, you typically see some type of correlation in the Aussie um, USD. But yeah, we'll see how this all pans out. Like I mentioned, uh, we, we still need to see um, how, how this candle closes. Um, one thing I wanna do before um, we change to a single screen, I'm gonna go to the US dollar um, index right here to the right. Um, because it can sort of give you clarity on what price may do. And right now we're heading down, we're heading to the downside on the dollar. 
which is exactly what we expected dollar weakness um but we do have this area of um of demand uh right here we definitely do see that so you know we want to be careful um with entering a short now and we can see the reaction right here you see this wick um it's it's reacting to this level because like we said we were anticipating the sellers to come in and um oftentimes you need to look sometimes you need to look at multiple charts in order to get an idea of what price wants to do but yeah our job here is to help you and to give you exactly what we're looking for so and you can make decisions with us in the market and not have to trade by yourself or trade alone which is why we recommend that you guys join the private war room uh, whenever you can um, join the private war room you know we were able to explain more and even teach more you know in that war room and you'll be able to see exactly why we make certain decisions why we wait and sit on our hands you'll you'll see all of that but um it looks like the dollar wants to respect this area of internal demand or hidden demand. It's not it's not as obvious. It's sort of hidden. It's cloaked. Um, but, you know, we'll show you all the signs you need to see in order to know when price is going to bounce or when price is going to react to a zone or level that may be hidden. But, yeah, this is the Aussie USD. And we can see that price is having somewhat of a difficult time to push higher. I think we should be seeing the same thing with the U.S. dollar Japanese yen where price is having a some type of difficult time maybe pushing lower maybe now uh, let's see oh no no it seems like it wants to go okay but yeah so we we definitely have to wait to see how this candle closes but um yeah it's going to be interesting it will be interesting we'll we'll come back to this one but um all right let's um let's go and uh, look for one more um let's do USD. Okay, yeah, this is sort of similar, anyways, to um to the Australian dollar. But yeah, with the Kiwi USD, we have something quite similar. We have um, of course, price corrected. Where did price correct to? Structure, look left, structure leaves clues. Um, came exactly where we wanted price to go to. Because remember, remember, in trading, you always want to buy at support and sell at resistance. That's what you want to do. So. In this case, what you'll typically do, you'll look left to see, is there a support anywhere on this chart? Is there a structure anywhere on this chart? And you can say, well, it's not as clear or as obvious as I would want it to be. But um, here's a few things you need to know. So right here, we see this area of consolidation, right? Um, price was really trapped in the range going up, down, up, down, consolidating, right? right here but this can sort of give us an idea of where the certain the key levels are so then what i typically like to do is take my fibonacci draw it from the low of that consolidation up to the high and then what we have is a area of the 50 the halfway point because the halfway point of areas of consolidation are actually areas of supply and demand or where the buyers and sellers come in at so then let's just make this let's just make it a blue line for now but um we also have structure right here so then let me make another horizontal line uh right around here the yellow line so then right around this area this is where i, I would have been expecting price to pull back to before we see the buyers come in so did that happen i don't know let's see yep exactly see that right where the yellow line and blue line is that's where the buyers came in and we see price pushing up so um oftentimes you can identify where the buyers and sellers are going to come in at um almost to the t like almost exactly where you expect the buyers to come in at if you guys stick with with us for a while you guys will see that and um and then you can make certain predictions you can impress your friends and say yeah price is going to go here and it's going to bounce here they'll think that you're a profit or something <laughs> but um anyways what we're looking at right now we're looking at price expanding to the upside but we still want to wait to see how this candle closes mainly due to the fact that we have what you would call internal supply right here on a one hour. So uh, we're gonna call this one hour supply. This is where the sellers are. We're gonna wait to see how price um, reacts to this level. As a matter of fact, what I'm gonna do for this one, um, cause this one looks a little bit better than the other one. Um, let me go to the 15 minute first. Uh, 15, how's the 15 minute looking? Okay, this is the 15 minute price pushed up down. But what we wanna see is a, is a one hour close. So, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to put a price alert 
right here and I'll be notified when that happens. If we do see that, I'll be notified and then I'll decide on how I want to execute or if I want to execute. So then uh, from here, we'll just say uh, break entry right here. And we're going to put an alert for the one hour chart. We're going to wait for the one hour for a one hour close above this level. Like right now, we can see that the wick above it. We see this nice wick, but we need to wait for a candle close, which, which means we want to see the body of the of the candle, the current candle close above this pink line. If you don't see that, then we're not going to execute anything. So um, let's do crossing up. Yeah, and I know some of you guys um, may want a more simpler approach, which is more swing. Um, and we will definitely talk about that. Like if you guys, if you don't have time to look at these charts, then um, we'll definitely give you a more simpler approach that, you know, can still <laughs> pay out pretty well. Um, but um, let's see, see, break and close above um, our supply. Buy on retest. So then we'll look to buy on retest, and then you can decide on you know what your parameters are. Um, as a matter of fact, let me just do that right now. Um, so if we went and bought right here at this area, right here, and um, of course we would want our stop maybe to be somewhere right around here. 12 or 13 pips and you know then we can target um maybe huh, i would like to go higher but you know i'm concerned about this area right here um so uh, we may have to tighten this up a little bit maybe right around there right around here so yeah we'll 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 see about 10 10 pip stop loss but um but yeah we'll we'll come back to this later and um because you know, we'll we'll see how this candle closes. It looks like it wants to close above it, but um, we have about what twenty minutes almost. Yeah, till the close, twenty three minutes. So yeah, we'll see. We will know for certain in twenty three minutes. But it's breaking up right now, and and that's the thing. Also, one thing, guys. I know it's tempting to jump in. Um, you're looking at this. You're like, man, Melvin, can we jump in now? You already know it's going up. Can we jump in? And um, you can, but if you do it and it ends up working out well for you, then that can create a bad habit because um, oftentimes you never want to jump in um, immediately. You always want to wait for the candle to close first before you um, before you decide to execute or decide to do whatever you want to do, either sit on your hands or, or wait. So um, we're just going to wait a little bit, maybe, you know, 20, 20 some minutes. And then we'll see how this candle closes and that will help us to determine what we need to do. All right. But yeah, we're just going to keep our eye on this and um, we'll let you guys know uh, what's going to happen. But it looks like price may want to continue pressing higher, which is interesting. But I know for the dollar, we do still have this zone. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to be, you know, in all honesty, I may just play it somewhat safe. But if I do decide to go in, I'm going to go in with a smaller position. I'm not going to execute at my full size. Um, the reason why is because we know that there's demand based on the dollar index, the U.S. dollar index. We know there's demand down here. So if I do decide to go in, let's say that price does close above this level at the close of the hour. I'll go in smaller than what I normally go in, go in at. And it's because of what I see with the dollar index. But, yeah, that's another topic in itself. I don't want to add more to your plate as far as, you know, figuring out what to do. Uh, we'll know, you know, based on what we want to do when this candle closes. All right. Are there any questions about the Kiwi USD before we move forward? If not, then what I'm going to do is pass the mic over to Marvin, and then he's going to definitely share with us exactly, you know, what we need to see and what what we should look forward to. All right. So yeah. All right. So um. <clears throat> Yeah, so um, <clears throat> you know, I'm gonna do my best to sort of, you know, briefly, um, sort of explain some of this fundamental backdrop for for this week, and 
you know, really, there's only a few events that the market is sort of trading in front of or trading um, around um, this week. And, you know, those two events are, you know, the, um, the ECB monetary policy meeting on Thursday. But even before that, um, the U.S. CPI data, the Consumer Price Index, which is uh, the markets, Wall Street's preferred inflation gauge, which comes out on Wednesday. And really, that is, you know, pretty much what it will be the focus of investors for this week and even what will be driving risk sentiment. But um, also within the same time period, um, you know, this is, you know, well, some of you that have been with us, you will know that it's, it's triple witching. Um, it's that third week ahead of the close of a new quarter, of the close of this quarter as we move into the, you know, the next quarter. Um, and what usually happens, and, you know, during triple witching is that, um, you know, we see volatility kind of maintain a range, you know, ahead of that you know, triple witching on Friday. So then for this week, since this is a light economic docket, since there's not really much on the docket except for the US CPI and, and you know, and don't get me wrong, there is other indicators. I know we have UK jobs data that I think is coming out tomorrow. Uh, we have some retail sales data from, from the US as well that comes out on Thursday. But uh, for the most part, the market will be sort of trading within the range ahead of triple witching where we get, you know, all three classes or categories of stock options, uh, futures, you know, um, expiring. Their contracts will expire and we'll see a new set of contracts on the options chain. So then that's going to happen on Friday. And usually we see volatility and market activity sort of constrained throughout the week until that Friday when we see an uptick in volatility as um, traders attempt to close out or square up some of their contracts ahead of expiration. So then, yeah, that's, you know, for this week. So then that's some of the backdrop behind um, some of the market environment. But for the most part, we do have important high tier data coming out with the first batch of data being the US CPI inflation data. And, and as we talked about before, we've been seeing this dollar weakness. Uh, let me just pull up um, this on, you know, this, this dollar weakness come in in anticipation of that news on Wednesday. So some are, you know, saying, some analysts are saying, is this uh, pre-positioning in the dollar? Is it sell-off in the dollar? Is it exclusively a China story? Is it exclusively a Bank of Japan story? Or could it be that the market is sort of pricing in uh, a more, you know, um, how can I say it? A less dovish or less, oh, well, less hawkish Fed and a more dovish uh, Federal Reserve monetary policy stance, because um, what markets are sort of um, looking at, they, they want to see what the CPI data would come out as, so they can kind of get an idea of how the Fed would maneuver moving forward. What would be their forward guidance when it comes to rates? Um, does it look like the Fed has more one more rate hike in their tool belt for the uh, for the U.S. economy, or? with inflation data signal that the Fed may need to slow down and stop and they can just keep rates high, but don't do anything, just stand pat for the time being. So then, you know, so then some are saying this sell off in the dollar could be partly, um, could partly be contributed or attributed, I should say, to um, the CPI data on Wednesday, but it's kind of hard, hard to say, you know, for sure now. But um, we do see this dollar weakness and we're in this environment where it seems as if risk assets want to move to the upside. So then what I want to do real quick, you know, I want to go to one of our favorite um, sites. Let me just do this real quick. Um, I, I, I think I went to the wrong. Let me go to this right here. And we're going to go to financial visualization. And um, well, I know I posted the futures heat map in the chat group. You know, as you can see, you can see across the board on the futures heat map um, that, you know, a good majority of the asset classes is, is still mixed, but we can see that there's this preference for risk. There's this appetite for risk. We see stock equity indices 
um, you know, pointing to the upside ahead of the Wall Street Open. We see the Russell 2000, Dr. Russell in positive territory. What's interesting is what we see happening with the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ is trading to the upside. It's uh, according to this futures, E-mini futures is up 116 points ahead of the Wall Street opening bell. And some are saying that that could be due to markets anticipating strong, you know, tech data coming out. We have tech earnings, um, just a few because we're at the tail end of earnings season. And we have uh, for this week, we have Oracle coming out after the close on today. And then we also have, um, I think, Adobe later on on Thursday. They'll be coming out with their earnings report and their projections for the year. But um, we can see that the Nasdaq is leading the rally to the upside. Growth is um, being preferred, which is indicative of risk appetite. The market wants to take on risk and invest in more riskier uh, growth-based companies. So then we see that the VIX is also selling off. Um, it's moving lower. Um, so then that a pure sign of traditional um, risk appetite that we see happening. But what's interesting is that usually we'll see a pickup in oil during times of risk appetite, but we see oil selling off. We see crude oil down, um, you know, selling off, and we see all these other commodities in rally mode. So then, you know, of course, some may be wondering, okay, if the U.S. dollar is selling off, and since oil is denominated in U.S. dollars, why aren't we seeing a rally in, in oil prices? So then there's a reason for that. So let me just do this real quick. Let me just pull this up. I'm just going to go to the directly to the site, oilprice.com. And as you can see, one of the main headlines for today is Saudi Arabia. Aramco <laughs> to deliver full oil volumes to Asia in October. So then what we see here, we see that this Saudi company, Saudi Ar Aramco, um, of course, they maintain their production cuts of like 1 million what, barrels per day of production cuts until the end of the year. But we also see uh, Saudi Aramco choosing to increase their, or ramp up to full crude oil volumes uh, for North and North Asian refiners. So then that's actually causing, um, the, you know, crude oil to sell off um, since um, it seems as if there, there's going to be, you know, more oil made available in, in the market. So then you guys can read this article on your own time. But that could be, um, this could be one of the reasons why we're seeing that sell off in oil while we're seeing gold move to the upside while we're seeing most of our other U.S. dollar denominated, you know, U.S. dollar commodities move to the upside as well. So then, yeah, so then, you know, oftentimes, you know, a weaker oil prices is good for the economy as well. It's good for manufacturing. It's good to help boost and stimulate economic growth. So then, you know, that can be, you know, a part of it as well. But, um, Okay, yeah, I was just reading this breaking news. Ukraine retakes oil and gas platforms off Crimea from Russia. Okay, hmm, interesting. So, yeah, so then that's with that. But, um, yeah, we see oil prices selling off, but we see all these other precious metals, industrial metals, base metals moving to the upside, and the U.S. dollar is the weakest currency for the session. And if we go to this Forex heat map, you can see the same thing here, how um, the Aussie is the strongest currency. You remember it's benefiting from Chinese news that came out over the weekend, followed by the Japanese yen. You remember statements from Bank of Japan, Ueda, mentioning that they may move their rate, uh, monetary policy, uh, shift away from a negative interest rate policy to a positive uh, interest rate for the Japanese yen. So then that's actually uh, one of the reasons why it's the second strongest currency. And then after that, the Kiwi sent it's sort of tied to, um, you know, both situations. But um, as you can see, there was just a, a switch. The Japanese yen right now is considered the strongest currency for the session. It's rallying. Definitely, we saw that in the U.S. dollar Japanese yen pair when we was looking at it. It just seems as if it wants to continue to tumble lower and pass through those st structure levels, structure areas of demand. So then, so U.S. dollar is the weakest, and, and, and Japanese, Japanese yen is the strongest. So you definitely want to look <clears throat> for opportunities yeah. to sell. So this that was a perfect example of how, like, even though we don't see the three wave pullback for the U.S. dollar Japanese yen to actually sell it. 
you can see how the fundamentals, the macro data is what really contributed to that. Whenever we see a deviation from what we normally see technically with three wave pullbacks in, in those corrective phases, that can just simply mean that the macros, the fundamentals are what's driving the market. And it's really the news flow, the order flow that's really contributing to the sell off. So then we see this, um, you know, with the uh, in the forex, the Aussie, the Japanese yen are the two strongest currencies for today. I need to switch back. <laughs> yeah, that, you know that's going to happen. But um, let's go to the crypto space. But we see something different happening in cryptocurrencies. We're seeing a drop in demand. We're seeing cryptocurrencies sell off, with XRP being the worst performer for the session. Um, it's been, um, you know, it hasn't been holding up since the news, since uh, you know of them passing. Their, their case or winning their case against the SEC. Uh, we saw that they had that post uh, win spike, but since then it has completely retraced and it appears to want to continue to sell off. Or, you know, it's one of the weaker currencies for today. So then we have XRP followed by Litecoin, followed by Ethereum being the three weakest currencies for today. But really across the board, you can see with this heat map that cryptocurrencies have not been doing the best thus far and it seems as if right now traders are sort of moving out of these newer havens and moving more into your legacy assets or legacy havens like traditional stocks traditional bonds traditional commodities, yeah, yeah traditional commodities they're so they're more so moving away from this you know these newer uh, type of digital assets and choosing to say okay well we we want to move our money into an asset that we know has um, um, stood the test of time that's a legacy that's been around and um, it's going to take a while for things to implode. But yeah, right now, traders are choosing to park their money outside of, you know, the digital space into more traditional legacy assets. So, um, but yeah, but for this Monday morning, there's not really much. There's not much on the docket. Like even if we go to Forex Factory, there's not really much on the docket for today. It's not even really too, you know, high tier, high priority data coming out and rarely any US data posted on Forex Factory. If we was to go to, you know, daily FX, we may see some, US, you know, US uh, data printed that's not really, you know, important, but um, yeah, you can see, you know, of course, um, some bond options. These are more of our shorter term notes that um, are set to happen. And that's pretty much it. We got consumer inflation expectations, but yeah, for the most part, there's not really any U.S. data that's going to drive sentiment. So what we, we're, so we're going to trade off of what we saw over the weekend with Chinese data, with Japanese data, and also just headlines that come out throughout the day. Um, but markets going to be subject or at the mercy of news headlines that come out. So, um, but yeah, but yeah, we had Mexican Mexico industrial production numbers come out. Um, they actually improved to the upside from the previous month. So then that's good for the Mexican peso and for emerging markets as well. However, for South Africa, we did see a drop in manufacturing production. So we're seeing, you know, a divergence there, you know. But um, but yeah, so then that's pretty much it. Um, like I don't really have too much to share. This is Monday morning, it's a light morning. Traders are still making their way to the desk. But um, as news headlines come out, we'll definitely try to report, you know, on them. But uh, for the most part, this could be a day of Monday retracement, Tuesday turnaround, where we do see Monday markets show a positive bias, retracing some of the losses from last week, followed by a turnaround Tuesday, where we see a continuation of that slide lower. But, you know, it all depends on what news comes out and what's really driving sentiment um, during tomorrow's session. That would determine the, the direction or the order flow for tomorrow's trading activity. But in the meantime, we trade what we see, not what we think, not what we feel, and we just trade based off of technicals. So, um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pass the mic back over to my brother and he's gonna take over for the rest of the session. All right. So we can see here this reaction in um, the Kiwi USD. Um, you can see that price is, um, rejecting from this level we could see some buyers come in for the dollar but um what i wanted to do i wanted to look at the japanese yen because i know that one is definitely gaining some level of strength so then um let's see if how that's looking all right so then we do see it react yeah it reacted to this zone right here 
you know, as we wanted it to. And um, it looks like we may see, you know, price correct higher and creep that third leg. So then we're going to keep our eye posted on this entire setup and we'll let you guys know. Uh, what we decide to do even for this pair. But that's why it's always good to be patient, guys. It always pays to be patient because, you know, your inexperienced trader would have jumped in. As soon as he's seen his strong bears and govern candle, he would have been like, hey, it's selling off. Let me jump in now. And that's the wrong thing to do. You want to be patient and sit on your hands no and and not, yeah, not be motivated by FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, cause that's something that even I still have to really conquer completely is formal and fear of missing out. Most traders, even if you've been trading for 30 years, you know, that's something that, you know, you'll tend to make mistakes from time to time It's one of the hardest things to conquer is fear of missing out. But, you know, the more experience you get, the more you're able to really cope with FOMO and not let it get to you. So, um, yeah, just keep looking at these charts, analyzing these charts and, and trading, you'll eventually figure it out <laughs> yeah yeah your balance sheet your your account your profit loss your equity curve will definitely help you <laughs> in that area because you'll know okay why am i constantly jumping in when when price um hasn't really confirmed anything yet and there's and it's still testing a level it hasn't broken through yet so anyways um let's do some top-down analysis so all right so then i know some of you guys like to trade gold so then that's what we're going to do right now. Let me see if we can go to, I'm going to do the monthly chart because uh, I haven't done that in a while uh, for gold. So yeah, let's, let's do that. All right. Okay. So right now we're on the monthly chart of gold and we can see that, you know, as you guys know, we've been forming this triple top. It looks like a triple top is forming prices, respecting these highs. And in the same way we had a nice drop, you know, the last two times we could see a significant drop now. My only concern is that right here, price is testing um, a monthly hidden supply zone right here. So and there's a possibility we could see the buyers come in right now and help push price up. So then that's something to bear in mind as well. But if you drop down to the weekly chart, what do we see? So on the weekly chart, um, we see price correcting, right? And uh, let me get rid of this because we don't really need this right now. And let me um, get rid of some of these lines. But yeah, we see price correct to an area of um, structure or demand. So this is the reason why you saw price react, you know, and push higher the last, you know, few weeks or really three weeks. Um, you know, well, you know, three weeks from now, you saw this reaction um, or three weeks prior, I mean. So, yeah, we're expecting um, something interesting to take place because um, we had this. Well, I could have kept this here, but um, what you know, well, let me just keep this here. But oftentimes the market would tell you uh, where things could shift. So, you know, we have, um, of course, this trend line right here that looks like it's forming. It looks like it wants to form. Let me see if we can clone that one and bring that down here to the lows right around here and right there. So we do see price. It looks like it's creating this weekly channel to the downside. So we definitely want to pay attention to that. And um, yeah, because what we can assume now is that price may want to push up and tag this line before it starts sliding lower again. That's what we can assume for, for gold. So anyways, let's go down to the daily chart. Let's see what we see on the daily. OK, so on the daily, this is what we see. As a matter of fact, uh, for some reason, our lines didn't show up. Um, let me make sure they're showing up. Um, make sure they're visible. On those smaller time frames. And let me get rid of that. And let's do this one right here. All right, and let me make sure this is visible as well, because sometimes these levels don't. Okay, so is there anything else? Um, yeah, I think we're good for now. All right, so then let's go down to the daily. All right, so then right now we're looking at the daily chart, and as you can see, price um, expanded. Now we have this pullback, and now it looks like price wants to push higher 
and expand higher on the daily. Like I mentioned before, what we're expecting is for gold to rally, maybe test this descending trend line resistance or this channel resistance, descending channel resistance before we see the sellers come in. So then our bias is maybe bullish to the upside for today. So with that said, let's go down to the four hour chart. So then this is what we see on the four hour chart. And um, yeah, this is from earlier, but yeah, price did expand or correct pretty deep, but now we're in the middle of this consolidation phase and we want to look for an opportunity to trade gold. So gold is in an interesting position. Um, right now how i would trade it um i would wait for price to clear these clear these highs right here i would wait because it's just too risky right now to enter in so then again let me just draw this in right here so then we have four hour supply right here four hour supply what you want to do if you want to be on the safe side simply wait for price to clear this zone first before you look for buys. Because for all we know, price could respect this level and then come all the way down and maintain this range for a while. The only way you can know that the buyers are taking control is if we see price break this zone, come back to retest it, and then look for your, your buy. And then you could trade it up to these highs or even higher. But yeah, that's what we're looking for right now on go. We're gonna be a little bit patient and wait for that to happen. We're not gonna just jump in and just assume that price is gonna do um, something that is really not gonna do. So yeah, this is on the one hour chart. Um, you can see the same thing. This is an area of um, supply. So we need to see price at least break and close above the zone before we consider doing anything. Because we have this nice long week right here. Um, it'll just be safe. Now, you know, if you do decide to buy, it's risky. But you know, that's how you make money. You make money by taking risks. So if you do want to buy this dip, this correction right now, you can. Um, just know that we do have this structure and there's no guarantee that price is going to break above this structure. So yeah, we we'll, we shall see. But um, anyways, are there any questions before we move on to the next asset? Going once, going twice. All right. So yeah, we're just gonna sit on our hands a little bit and maybe wait for that to take place. Uh, maybe wait for price to clear this zone and then look for a retest. Clear this zone, retest, boom. So yeah, we'll see. All right, so that was gold. Let's do one more, let's do the NASDAQ and we'll probably call it a day. And I think with the NASDAQ, you know, that one was kind of interesting. Um, I think we had like a bearish flag earlier, um, a bearish flag setup, but it looks like with the way things are looking, <laughs> price is breaking to the upside. So we do not have that flag that we were anticipating. Um, the buyers are coming in. We knew that the buyers were going to come in right around this zone, but um, I thought price was going to test this trend line and then come back down. But um, as you can see, price is constantly going up. We can see this a little, little bit better on the one hour. Yeah, it looks like price wants to definitely um, expand higher on this particular setup. So, yeah, we'll see how the market opens. Um, the market opens in about 8.30, um, my time, central time, 9.30 Eastern. We're, we're just going to sit on our hands and wait uh, for that to happen. But um, as of now, with how everything is looking, there's risk appetite. We think stocks may rally today, but um, you never know. It's always wise to wait after the open to know for certain how price may want, may want to move for the, for the day, especially if you're trading the Dow and the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. Um, just wait a little bit before you try to tackle the markets. And, you know, so, yep. All right, guys, um, I guess we can end kind of early for today. I know we'll be in a war room later on, so then just be on the lookout for that. But I hope you guys got something from today's session. Let me go over those pairs again. So then the first one, we did US dollar, Japanese yen. Uh, what's happening with that one? Okay, it's respecting this area of demand, hidden demand right here. We're um, definitely gonna sit on our hands a bit and not just assume anything. I know we do have this bearish 
engulfing candle, which is typically what we want to see. Um, in all honesty, it, it is what we want to see, but I'm just going to wait and not do anything yet. Um, sometimes patience is the best option. Okay, and then we did um, Aussie USD. How's that looking? Uh, okay, then, then this one is really trying to push higher, um, but we didn't get um, what we wanted to see, a break of the zone, so then we'll see what happens. And then the next one is the Kiwi USD. And let's see how that closed. And that closed sort of similar to the Aussie USD. So yeah, we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming to today's session. And like we say at the end of every single meeting, remember to always count your blessings, not your pips. And we will definitely see you soon. Stay blessed, stay encouraged. And uh, we'll definitely um, talk to you later. If and if we, and if we see you in the private war room, then um, yeah, we'll we'll definitely see you soon. So yeah, just enjoy your morning if we don't see you, and um, we'll meet again later this week. All right, talk to you guys later. All right, okay then, okay then, bye.